Hey there, this is Hamed with Saratech, and I'm here and I have the privilege of speaking to Doug Collins, owner and founder of Avid Product Development here in Loveland, Colorado. We're here today for their open house event. So Doug, thank you very much for taking the time for this. Absolutely. Um, what I'd like to do is learn a little bit about your background, sure. what today's event is all about, and uh, what everybody came here to see today. Uh, you know, this was a pretty packed house Absolutely. all day, right? Now right. we finally have a chance so I can talk to you for a few minutes. Sure. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and this company? Absolutely. So my name is Doug Collins. I'm one of the owners of Avid Product Development. I'm a mechanical engineer. We're a small company of seven people and we do product development services, mechanical engineering, product design, and commercial 3D printing. Um, we recently bought from Saratech this new HP multi-jet fusion technology you can see in the background there. And our open house today was to showcase that new technology and what we can bring to the marketplace for production, um, 3D printing, prototyping, and consumer products direct out of a printer without having to go to tooling. We can make parts directly with this new technology. I want to stop you right there. So you said production 3D printing. Absolutely. And from my experience as a uh, 3D printer Print. reseller, we see that one of the biggest shifts in the 3D printing world is that it used to be used just for a prototype. Sure, To absolutely. see what your product looked like, to pass it around, do a show and tell. Right. And now it's more like, here's the actual product. It absolutely. came off the printer and it's going on the front. Yep, and, and we of course still use this technology for prototyping and iterative design. Now we can take it further and we can actually make production um, products and quantities of products. Here's a great example. This little housing um, is, is a little housing for a circuit board assembly. There's some switches and Bluetooth and all that kind of fun stuff that goes in here. And this is a great story for a product where the customer needed a low volume of these, about a 50 sets, so it was 150 parts total. And they were, they, they had us quote these parts, called back a, a couple weeks later on a Wednesday, and the client said, Doug, remember those quotes you, you, those parts you quoted for me? I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. What do you need? He's like, well, I meant to have a PO to you on Monday, but I need the parts on Friday. What can you do? I'm like, well, let me see. So with this technology, we were able to get it in the build on Wednesday night. We, we cooled it Thursday morning, bead blasted and finished the parts, dyed them black like this on Friday. He picked up 150 parts on Friday afternoon and was at his customer, a hero, Friday afternoon showing off his finished parts that is not possible in any other technology today to be able to do something that fast that high quality and and just really finished usable parts wow so let's talk about a little bit about the hp printer so first of all what was today's event all about the open house sure so it was to showcase this technology to, to show our existing customers, potential new customers, um, what we can do with this technology, both in really high-end finished parts for, for prototypes and for production for that same purpose, to, so that they can see what they can do with their businesses and how they can take their businesses further with parts that they can have now, they can have parts today, they can have parts quickly to, to really engage the marketplace with their their products their technologies whatever that is so what kind of people came here to this event and by the by the way this is the only hp printers in colorado right here at your facility absolutely these, are, these were the very first ones in colorado and i believe the only ones except now hp has one but they're not a service bureau so um yeah so we're making parts for you know all kinds of different customers and the people that came today were a collaboration of of people that need prints people that want to buy a printer people that um, are just in the uh, entrepreneurial and, and, and business development community. Um, we had the people that loaned us the money for the printer was here today. You know, all those types of folks, everybody that's involved in making this a success for Abbott and Saratech and HP came to celebrate these printers and, and be part of understanding what their capabilities are. Awesome, awesome. So can we take a quick tour and see what this printer is all about? Let's go check it, it out. If you Absolutely. Could that, that would be great. For sure. So this thing's pretty massive. Let me move out a little bit. <laughs> there you go, just to give an idea of the size. So this is, what, what, what are we looking at here? This is the actual printer. So there's a job in here that's printing right now. There's 6,009 parts, very small parts, that are printing. So can you explain what's going on here? Yeah, so the way this printer works is a powder bed system. So it lays down a layer of powder and then it, it uses the HP inkjet technology to go across and print 
the parts that are in that layer. So each layer is about 30 thousandths of an inch or 80 um, micrometers thick. So very thin. Um, and then it prints very high detail parts. Right now it's printing just some powder between the next layer of parts. We, we should see some parts here in a little bit. We'll come back to it to see some parts printing. So, sorry, when you say in between parts, so that means it's essentially stacking parts on top of each other? Exactly. So in this build, I don't know if you can see the screen here or not, but there's a pile of parts in this bed. And so the, the size of the envelope is about 15 inches wide, 11 and a quarter inches deep, and fit, or long, and then 15 inches deep. And so you can build entire parts in a cube, uh, anything that fits in that, in, that, in that volume of material. So does it take any longer to print uh, a certain number of parts? I mean, it's going to go through the whole build every time. Is that correct? Well, you can choose how deep of a build you want to do. So right now we're, we're printing this is 260 millimeters deep, but you can print a total of 380 millimeters deep as a full build. But if you only have 100 millimeters of parts, you can, only do, you can do just that as well. And so the shorter the build, the quicker it builds and prints, and also the quicker then it cools so that it, you can get your parts out quicker. So you talked about people coming here for speed with that customer who needed a very quick turnaround. Absolutely. How much faster is this printer than what the other technologies on the market? Sure, so if you can fast cool the parts, and that, that, that depends on the type of parts you're printing, those parts we could, it's about 10 times faster than selective laser sintering. It's about 80 times faster than fused deposition modeling. So, for example, we have a, a, a bicycle frame that we build as a test part for um, a bike company, and it used to take us three weeks to build that entire frame. Now we did it in three days. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's dramatic. So time to market. Yep. Um, and uh, what else are customers coming so, for? So iterative design, iterative right? Design. They, they, they send us part, they have it back in a couple days. They might, have, they might need 20 of them so they can go implement them. And then they need to tweak that design, they come back for 20 more. Okay, awesome. So let's check it out here. So the, when this finishes, what's the next step? Can you walk me through that? Sure. So after it's done printing, it will then cool in the machine for a little bit, just, just for safety. And then we take the build unit, it's, it's like a cart, it comes out of here, and then we take it over to this processing station that's behind us. So this is where, kind of before printing and after printing, this is where the magic happens. So this is the area where we, we fill the build unit with powder that's gonna be used to print in, but we also use it to unpack the, the print and excavate the parts out of the build. So in this build, there's, there, there's about 6,000 parts in here, lots of little parts. Um, that, that we use and this system it vacuums up the old powder and it takes it into a tank over here to recycle it. One of the great great things about this new system is that we, we reuse all of the powder. So when it fills up the build unit it uses 85% recycled powder and then 15% of this fresh powder that's down here. And so what it does is it, it um, it mixes those two and, and blends it in 85, 15% ratio and then fills it. So we've been running these printers for about 10 weeks. We haven't thrown out any powder. You lose a little bit of powder when you bead blast the remaining powder that's on the parts, but other than that, we reuse all of it. So it's very environmentally friendly in that sense as well. We're not wasting material. Nice. And can you talk about the post-processing or the bead blasting? Sure, sure. So after we vacuum up as much of the powder as we can and we brush off the powder and get as much as we can, we take it to a standard bead blasting station and we bead blast off the remaining powder. It gives it a nice gray finish to the parts. And then if you want them um, finished beyond that, we can, we, can bead bla or we can dye the parts black mm -hmm. or we have um, painting capabilities or other options like that to give it a, a finish that the customer needs for their for their finished product. Very cool. Can we see some parts that Absolutely. are finished? Absolutely. Let's check them out. Let's go over there. Go back over to the parts. So here, let's turn around this way. We'll keep the printers in the background. There it's we more go. fun to see those. <laughs> so this is actually a Saratech part. This is a, a part for a jig. It's really, really strong, very robust. Um, it holds up uh, parts that go into an airplane for assembly. Um, we have, this is a really nice part that was finished, painted after the fact. It has metal threaded inserts inside of it that, that get put in after printing. Um, but So there's got brass threads now. 
but you can see this is a part that was printed on the printer, has really nice finish, and then a really strong finished coat paint. So the customer can use it outside, in the weather, it's waterproof, all that kind of stuff. This is a, an assembly that was designed in Avid and then printed for our customer. Um, it's, a, it's a game camera. We printed, we designed this, printed a few prototypes, and then now we printed, I think, 50 sets of these, and they're out in the wilderness oh, wow. in, in, in uh, Wisconsin is where our customer is, um, and they're testing them. There's, there's gaskets and circuit boards and lenses and cameras. See that de so look at the detail of those words on there. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So what would be the traditional process of manufacturing this? So in the end, this will be, this will be injection molded at some day. Okay. For now, they're not ready and, and they're not, the design isn't ready yet. So we're iter iter iterating the design to make sure that it's what they need, that it mm -hmm. works, all the functionality. And so this has some of the elements of an injection molded design into it, not complete yet because we're still making it with additive manufacturing. And it's just, you know, it's the right way to do it so that they can test it, prove it. We'll go through another design rev right. to tweak it and then they'll have a finished product that then eventually can go to injection molding and make hundreds of thousands of products. Right. And you had some pretty detailed parts over here. Can we talk about you know, one of these or sure. the other ones that you have here. Yeah, so you can do some really cool stuff. Um, some of these parts are some sample parts from HP. So this part has a ball inside a ball inside a ball. If I shake it, you can see inside there. So when you take this off the printer, it's got the powder all around it. Exactly. You bead blast it to release right. those balls. Exactly. Okay. The three balls are concentric when it's, when it's printed. They're not touching. And this is printed in one go. Yep. And, and in, awesome. in this printer, we could print hundreds of those in one build. Wow. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a chain mail type material that, again, all of these chains, they weren't touching when they were printed, but you can see just how malleable it is. Wow. Yeah. It's just, it just feels like it's cloth almost. That's amazing. So this was 3D printed. Yep. That's um, you can awesome. do very That's functional, you know, this is a gear and this is a, you know, very functional product. It's a finished part. They can put this in a in assembly and use it. There's nylon gears all over the world. This prints nylon gears, just exactly like this. Let's talk about strength for a second. I think you had a test over here, Absolutely. right? Let's talk about that product. That was really interesting. Yeah. Because a lot of people want to know how strong are these parts. You say they're production, but what does that really mean? Absolutely. So I don't have one of the non-tested handles here, uh, but you can imagine this is a handle. It was a handle, and it was put in a tension testing machine, and, and they pulled it and, and yanked it till it broke. And it broke at 1,362 pounds. Oh, wow. In, in an equivalent, we used to print this part in, in ABS plastic, and it used to break at about 700 pounds. That part was solid. This one is hollow, you can see inside of it. If we printed this solid, it would have a cubic function to how strong it would be. So you can imagine how strong it could be if we printed it solid. Right. So it's lighter, lighter and stronger. And stronger. Wow. And, kind of best of and 80 times faster to print. 80 times faster to print. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Now, I've also heard that there is a market for artists, sculptors, using this printer. Now, why is the, this technology of interest to in them? Yeah, so one of the cool things, I'll show you this, this part here that we have. So this is a, a sculpture in Loveland, where we are. Loveland, Colorado is a is a is one of the biggest sculpture communities in, in, in the country. We have three foundries in Loveland. One of them is across the street from our facility. And so what happens is the, cost, the, the artist had this as a full-size sculpture. It was a piece of wood and a bear coming out of the wood. And so in Loveland, we have another gentleman does 3D scanning of art. So he scanned it, sent us the data, we scaled it, <clears throat> and then we 3D printed it. It's actually hollow inside to save wow. material. It's got about a two millimeter wall thickness. And then they take this and they, they make a, a soft mold around it. They pour wax into that mold. Now they have a lot, uh, an option to make a lost wax casting in bronze. So they can go from their full size unit to a small size unit, sell lots of these, make lots of them in a very quick time. Let's say a couple of weeks for a couple thousand dollars. Look at that level of detail. You see the teeth? That is amazing. All 3D printed. Yep. That's incredible.
Very cool, Doug. Well, thank you very much. Is there, are there any other parts you'd like? To, you know what? Let's talk about, uh, so this part right here, I mean, you could pretty much like stand on this. Oh, we, we, so we had a, a few extra of these parts. So our, some of our engineers decided to drive their truck on top of them and no problem. Really? Absolutely. Wow. We have, we have a video of it. We'll share it sometime. <laughs> okay. Well, I'd love to add that here. This, this, is, this is a cool part. This is like a zip tie. And so you can see how flexible that is. And it actually pulls through and zips. And then you wow, can, that is 3D printed. That's 3D printed in the that's HP amazing. printer. That's amazing. How many of these could you print? Oh, you could print probably a thousand of them. In, yeah, in, in one, one print. day. Yeah, yeah in like a day. Yep. Hours. And you can twist it and take it out. That's amazing. Incredible. Great, Doug. Well, thank you very much for the pleasure of this interview. This was awesome. Okay, so this is right now, how has this changed your business and where do you see it going in the future? Yeah, I mean, this is the next generation of 3D printing, right? So it, it allows us to be, instead of just a prototype house, we're actually manufacturing products with this. We're, we're, we have a whole new customer base that doesn't just want a prototype. They want 100 parts in a week and we can now provide that. Nice. So. And uh, just last question here. So if a customer comes to you, other than being able to provide these parts, what other services does your company provide? If I'm trying to create a product, sure. can you help me in the design process? What, you know, from the background of the people that work here? Absolutely, so we're, we're a bunch of mechanical engineers at heart. That's what we do. I've been a product design guy for almost 20 years. And so we have a really talented pool of mechanical engineers and uh, we, we design products like that game camera that was designed in-house for our customer. Oh, wow. And then we also produce it. Um, and we have a great network of, of companies that we work with, Saratech and uh, machine shops and electrical engineers that we partner with when we have to do things that we don't do in-house. So we can, we can provide a complete turnkey product for our customers. Nice. So, Wonderful. Right on. Well, thank you very much, You're Doug. Welcome. Avid products, the Avid, Avid product development. Right. And uh, in Loveland, Colorado. And thanks for joining us here on the open house today. Right on. Thanks, guys.